John chapter number 8. There we go. John chapter number 8. Uh, I've just got three points here, and uh, I promise you I won't be real long. And uh, uh, But uh, uh, I do want you to get uh, from the Word of God uh, what the Lord has prepared for you. And uh, uh, so John chapter number 8. Let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's Word. If you cannot enter... Excuse me, I understand you may remain seated, but if we could stand and show respect as we read John chapter number 8. We'll pick up in verse number 31. We'll uh, continue through to verse number 37. We'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the message here today. John chapter number 8, beginning there in verse number 31, says this, And then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If, you, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered uh, answer them, Verily, verily, I, uh, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth a sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Uh, then I want you to read with me there verse number 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I entitle the message, The Liberty in Christ. The Liberty in Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for each one that's able to be here, Lord. Thank you for... Just uh, uh, the testimonies we got to hear of, Lord, how you just answered prayers, Lord, how you provided, Lord, uh, just even uh, used messages to speak to hearts. And Lord, we're so grateful for who you are and what you do, and, and Lord, that you're willing to just uh, work in each of our hearts. Lord, we're just nothing but worm food, really. And uh, Lord, we're just so thankful that you're willing to speak to, your, to, speak to each of our hearts. Lord, I pray now that you'll do that here during the message. Lord, uh, speak to our hearts. Lord, help us to be in tune to what you have for us. Lord, I pray that uh, you'd help me to uh, say the things that are, need to be said. Lord, I pray that I'd be maybe uh, something I wrote down, Lord, that shouldn't be said. Lord, help me to be blind to those things. But Lord, those things that uh, should be said that I didn't even write down, Lord, help me to say those things that are necessary. Lord, bless now your word, bless your people. Lord, I pray you be honored and glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. <clears throat> the liberty in Christ. The liberty in Christ. You know, Christ is uh, trying to free people from the bondage of sin, from the guilt of sin, and then from the power of sin. But each person must make a decision of what they are going to do with Christ. Today we'll look at the liberty that we have in Christ and then what it means uh, to us here today. I've just As I mentioned earlier, I've got just three things that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you. First of all, number one, freedom comes from the Word of God. Freedom comes from the Word of God. Look back in verse number 31 of our text there. John chapter number 8 and verse number 31 where it says, Then said Jesus unto those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You know, Jesus was helping them understand that they uh, could have freedom and it could come from the Word of God. You know, it's interesting. A lot of times people think, well, you know, uh, 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 the Word of God, uh, I've heard people say, the Word of God is oppressive, you know, uh, just uh, so overly overbearing and, and uh, far-reaching. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I like having boundaries. I like labels. Um, you know, I like, uh, if I go to uh, uh, the kitchen cabinet and I'm looking for, you know, if I will, there, we, we found a noodle. Is it, it's not ramen noodle, is it? It's, I don't remember that one. What is it? Yakisobi? Yakisobi. Okay. You may know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a, it, it's, I don't remember the, the flavor. Spicy chicken. Okay. And uh, we found this not too long ago. We, uh, we were at a store, and I told my wife, I said, hey, let's try this. You know, I'm kind of interested, and in, uh, I like spicy stuff, most of you know. And uh, I said, okay, let me, let me just try this. And, and uh, so we got it home. We mixed it up, made it, and, and 
now it's, I call it noodles, the kids call it soup. I like it where it's just a little bit on the dry side. The kids like it a little bit on the soupy side, but nonetheless, I love it. Amen. I just, uh, I enjoy it. But if it never had a label, if I didn't know what, it, what the flavor was, I wouldn't have been interested. I just said, no, no, thank you. I'm not interested in that at all. That didn't look uh, appealing at all. But because of the name, because of what the flavor was, I was very interested. Amen. Um, and, uh, you know, so then uh, uh, it also tells you how to cook it. It tells you how much water to put in there. And uh, you can microwave it or whatever you want to do. And, and uh, most of us, I think we only microwave it. We don't do anything else with it. Just a lot easier. Just uh, put it in there. And it, you microwave it and boom, you have it. It's ready to go. And boy, I enjoy it. Amen. But, you know, if I didn't follow the instructions and if it wasn't labeled... One, I wouldn't have eaten it. And two, I wouldn't have enjoyed it because uh, I wouldn't have known what it was. There's a lot of people in this world that don't know the Word of God. The Word of God has some boundaries, you know, those instructions, amen. And there's a lot of freedom in that, uh, within that, amen. And the problem is, is that they think, well, the boundaries are there to restrict me. No, they're to protect you from sin. They're protecting you from Satan. They're protecting you from yourself many times. And the problem with a lot of Christians is that they've got it in their head, and even people outside of Christianity, they've got it in their head that, well, you know, the Bible is restrictive. There's no freedom in the Bible. Look, I find more freedom in the Bible uh, than uh, uh, I did outside the Word of God. Amen? But the problem is, is that people don't like, uh, they don't like labels. And like I said, I like labels because I, then I know what I'm getting. And uh, <clears throat> I like knowing what, you know, I like knowing what, you know, verse of the Bible I'm reading. Amen. I'm glad there's names in the Bible. I'm glad there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, I'm glad there's a book of uh, Psalms. I'm glad there's a book of Proverbs. Uh, because there are times that I'm struggling with something. And I'm not going to read the book of Revelation. Amen. I'm not going to read the end of the book. I'm going to read the book of Psalm where I'm going to find encouragement. But God's word gives people the tools uh, to be able to break free from the bondage of sin and uh, the path to follow after righteousness. You see, the word of God gives instructions on how to get right and how to stay right. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 16, you don't have to turn there. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man, man of God may be perfectly for, uh, furnished, uh, thoroughly furnished uh, uh, unto all good works. It's profitable for what is right. It is uh, profitable for what is wrong. It is profitable how to get right and it's profitable how to stay right. Amen. I'm so glad that we have a Bible that we can get into and know, hey, this is what is right. Amen. I don't know about you. If, if, could you imagine going down roads? Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we were traveling uh, uh, Friday and Saturday and uh, Friday going down and then Saturday coming back. And there was uh, various signs that would say, you know, hey, roads construction or, or uh, signs that would uh, direct you, you know, uh, there were some construction zones. And so you had to make sure you're in the correct lane. And could you imagine if there were no signs telling you, hey, this is what, what's coming up ahead. And all of a sudden you're like, well, I just feel like going straight here and there's no bridge, you know, and, and uh, we take that bus, boom, you know, right off the bridge, you know. Uh, people would be like, well, are you stupid? No, you just uh, were following, uh, you weren't following instructions before, amen. Now the word of God is there to help us follow instructions, amen. And you and I as Christians need to be willing to say, hey, the word of God is there to be a help to us to be able to stay within the borders that we need to stay within, to prevent us from going off a bridge, to prevent us from getting in the wrong lane, to prevent us from going the wrong direction, amen? And, uh, you know, could you imagine, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, we, we one year, this was years ago, my dad uh, uh, was still alive, and uh, I think it was shortly before my dad passed away, I don't think it was very, very long before that, and uh, we are traveling uh, from... Uh, from Superior. We we're uh, traveling back, uh, coming back home. And uh, what's that? Yeah, it was a pastor's meeting up there in Superior. We we're coming back from there. And uh, my dad was driving. My mom was in the front seat. Uh, my wife and I were sitting in the back seat. I had offered to my dad, I said, hey, you know, I'll drive. He's like, oh, no, son, it's fine, you know. And I'm like, okay. Next thing we know, 
I'm looking ahead and I'm like, Dad, I think somebody's going the wrong way. He goes, what? I, I don't see it. Dad, Dad, there's somebody coming the wrong way. Look out. He gets over to the right and this person comes barreling down uh, Highway 53. It's a, mind you, it's, it's a split highway. You know, so it's two lanes going south and then it's split and then there's two lanes going north. And we're heading south. And this person's heading north on the southbound side. And I mean, they're, they're going, you know, 65, 70 miles an hour. And uh, immediately I called 911. I said, hey, there's this vehicle. I, I said the uh, name uh, of the vehicle, the color. I said, this is the license plate. Very quickly, I was able to see all those things. Called it in. And I said, they're going the wrong direction. They're going northbound on the southbound side. They said, okay, we'll send an officer over as quickly as possible. You know, if they would have been paying attention to the signs, they would have seen some of the signs. I mean, right when, when uh, they passed us, I looked. You could see a sign that said, wrong way. Amen? If they were going that direction, they'd see the sign that says, wrong way. Amen? The problem with some Christians is they're not paying attention to the road signs that God's trying to put in their way, trying to help them, trying to be a help to them, and saying, hey, I don't want you going the wrong way. I don't want you going in the wrong direction. I don't want you going off a wrong bridge. I don't want you going in the wrong lane. I want you going in the right way. Amen? That's what the Word of God is there for. The truth of God's Word is there to be a help to us. It is profitable, as I said, uh, to, uh, for what is right, what is wrong, how to get right, and how to stay right. But Satan wants to keep people in bondage, and so he'll lie to them about the Word of God. He'll tell them, oh, it's, it's old. It's really old. It's antiquated. Oh, he'll, by the way, he'll do this. This is the best uh, one. Yea, hath God said. <laughs> do you think God would really say that? How do we know that? Genesis chapter number three. Remember there? Uh, he comes to Eve and he says, Yea, hath God said? He got Eve to begin to question the word of God. God had already told her, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. You're to take care of uh, the garden. You're to take care of this tree. You're to take care of every single thing in this uh, garden, in the Garden of Eden. However, the tree of the knowledge of, uh, of uh, with the fruit of the tree, uh, of the knowledge of good, uh, good and evil, that you're not supposed to eat of it. What does she do? She said, oh, yeah, God said, we're not to eat it, neither should we, what? Touch it. Did God ever say they couldn't touch it? No. But see, what man does is man begins to add to it. Oh, yeah, we can't even touch it. And then I, I'm sure she probably went through her head, well, I've already touched it. I've already touched the tree. I've touched the fruit, I've touched the tree, so I might as well just eat of it now. Why? Because remember, the Bible tells us that it was pleasant to the eyes. Remember? So I'm sure she was probably thinking, well, I've already touched it. I didn't die then. I've already, you know, touched the tree. I've touched the fruit. I've touched the tree. I didn't die then. So, because then Satan, remember, all Satan did was he added one word. God had said, then the day you eat of it, thou shalt surely die. Satan, all he did was add one word. He had the truth, but he added one word. Thou shalt not surely die. You see, that's the design of Satan. Satan wants you to question God's word. And that's exactly what he'll try to get you to do every single time. But see, freedom comes from the word of God. Number one, freedom comes from the word of God. Number two, freedom comes from the truth of God. Freedom comes from the truth of God. Notice in verse number 32, John chapter number eight, in verse number 32. Notice it says there, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Not just get you free, but make you free. You see, Jesus wants uh, people to know the truth of themselves, the truth of him, the truth of God. Many people are in darkness spiritually, and they don't know it. You know, there's, there's some people... 
uh, they know they're in darkness. They're, they're in wickedness. You know, uh, uh, I think uh, I didn't get to hear all of Brother Calvin Allen's uh, message and, uh, uh, yesterday, but I think there was part of it where he was talking about some people he knew, is that correct, that were heavily into uh, demonic things, is that correct? His family, okay. Uh, I knew, I knew that I've heard part of it. I didn't get to hear all of it. There was some other th- reasons why. But anyways, um, so, uh, you know, there are some people, they're in, into uh, satanic worship. They're into, uh, and, and they know it. They know that they, uh, and they, they're okay with it. They're fine with it. They're okay with, uh, you know, uh, tarot cards and, and uh, boy, you could just uh, you name, name whatever you want when it comes to demonic things or satanic things. They know it. But then there are some people that don't know it. There are some people there in spiritual darkness. They, they don't even realize they're in darkness. Each person needs to know that they are a sinner in need of a savior. Then each person needs to know that Jesus died on the cross to become that savior. And each person needs to get their, uh, put their trust and faith in Jesus as their only way into heaven. I mentioned that this morning. I'm not going to rehash that. But, uh, excuse me, each person has to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Some people don't know the truth. They don't know that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. Some people have never heard that. You know, there's, there's been people I've shared the gospel with, and they're like, man, I've, I've never heard that before. Isn't that amazing when, when uh, you know, you think in America, you're like, oh, man, people have heard about Jesus. They've heard about salvation. Everybody has heard about it. You know, we, we run in our circles, and so we, we, we think that everybody knows about it. Jesus is the only way. We know that. But God wants to keep each person safe within the sheepfold. In John chapter number 10, look there with me real quick like. John chapter number 10. And notice with me quickly, verse number 7 through verse number 9. John chapter number 10, verse number 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the, what? Door of the sheep, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the, what? Door. By me, if any man uh, enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and what? Find pasture. You see, God wants you to be free from the bondage uh, of sin and Satan. And Satan wants to keep you bound to sin, bound to religion, bound to tradition, bound to the things that he knows that easily beset you. Christ is trying to set you free. Why? He's trying to show you the truth. Trying to show you the truth of yourself. If you, you know, uh, if you go on in life and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm okay. Nobody else, uh, everybody else is wrong. I'm, I'm the one okay. And, and I don't need any uh, correction. I don't need to change anything. Guess what? I got a secret for you. You're the one in need of changing. Amen. You're the one in need of the truth of God's word. And you and I need to be willing to say, Lord, would you work in my heart? Lord, would you show me uh, those things in my life, the truth of my life? Lord, help me. uh, uh, By the way, you know what? We like to lie to ourselves, don't we? Anybody ever uh, said, you know, uh, said to you, oh, boy, you're looking uh, like you put on a little weight, you know, and you're like, oh, no, no. I had somebody recently, they said, oh, brother, hell, you look like you're putting on a little weight. I'm like, yep. I said, and I can feel it. Amen. Why? We like to lie to ourselves. Oh no, I think I'm I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm pretty healthy, amen. While we're eating, you know, pecan pie and and uh, ec- extra baskin robins, you know, uh, and you're like, "Oh, no, I can handle one more," you know. It's like, "Uh." But you and I need to be willing to say, "Lord, would you show me the truth of where I'm at spiritually?" where I need to be spiritually and the things that I need to change spiritually, amen, so that I can become more healthy. Lord, I, I want to be a healthy Christian. I want to I want to be able to have a uh, 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 be free from from the traditions of things and, and the traditions of men. The Lord can make you free when you see and realize the truth of God and his word. 
Well, we see that uh, freedom comes from the truth of God. Number one, as far as the liberty in Christ, number one, freedom comes from the word of God. Number two, freedom comes from the truth of God. And lastly, number, number three, freedom comes from the Son of God. Freedom comes from the Son of God. Look back in our text there, John chapter number eight. And notice with me there in uh, verse number 33 and following. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. You know, Jesus here, he, was, he wanted to make those that were there free from the power of sin. But you see, this can only happen when we allow the Holy Spirit, when he dwells within us and, and you accept Christ as your Savior. It's the Holy Spirit that comes along and speaks to you and says, hey, that's right. Hey, that's wrong. How do we know that? I mentioned it, uh, even brother, I think brother... Uh, uh, Adcock mentioned it during the Sunday school hour in uh, 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 John chapter number 16. Let's go there real quick like. John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16. And notice with me there verse number 13. John chapter number 16 and verse number 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of What? Truth is come. He will what? Guide you into all what? Truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You know, the Holy Spirit is the one that comes along and says, hey, hey, you shouldn't do that. Hey, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say those things as a Christian. Husbands, listen carefully. That's when the Holy Spirit will say, hey, you shouldn't react, react harshly to your wife like that. Wives, that's when the Holy Spirit will come along. Hey, you ought to submit to your husband. Oh, I'm not going to submit. Uh, the Holy Spirit's saying, submit to your husband. Amen. Uh, by the way, parents, that's when the Holy Spirit comes along and says, hey, maybe you should apologize to your children because of how you discipline them. I remember the day my dad came to me and, and uh, now you should discipline, all right? But what my dad did uh, when we were younger, he would discipline in anger. He'd be so angry, and just, you know, wail the fire out of us. Now, did we deserve it? Yep. Were there times we uh, probably didn't get the spankings we deserved? Yep. Were there times that I got a spanking and didn't deserve it? Yep, that happened too. Amen? But it didn't affect me too much. Amen? <laughs> no, in all reality, though, one day, he came to us, and he apologized to each one of us. He said, son, I remember him. He brought me in his office, and he said, Tim, I'm really sorry. I disciplined you in anger. He said, I'll do my best not to do that again. He said, now, was he perfect at it? No. But did it change? Yep. I, I'd say within a year, maybe two years altogether, it was, I mean, it wasn't, you know, overnight, but... There was a change. Did I disown him because he, you know, disciplined and anger? No, he's still my dad. Did I still respect him and honor him? You betcha. Do I still honor him today? You betcha. Why? Because he was doing the best with what he knew he had. And then God showed him and said, hey, there's a more perfect way here. So when he came to us and he said, hey, I'm so sorry I disciplined in, you in anger. Would you please forgive me? I was shocked. I, was, I, I actually, my respect for my dad went from here all the way up here. I was like, the fact that he was willing to say, hey, I did wrong. I'm sorry. I'm going to do my best to change this. I respected him more because of that. You and I need to realize God is trying to do a work in each of our hearts and lives. Does it mean we're going to be perfect? Nope. Doesn't mean that we can allow God to work in our heart and our life. You betcha. Why? God wants to bring us to a different level. 
spiritually speaking. And sometimes we have to be willing to say, Lord, I, I know you, you uh, desire to do what's best in my heart and my life, and, and uh, I know the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to guide me and direct me, and uh, I, I'm so glad that he loves us enough that he dwells within us, but it's through the blood of Jesus that you have eternal life uh, and eternal freedom in heaven instead of eternal bondage in hell. It's through the blood of Jesus that you can have freedom from the power of sin uh, when, uh, uh, when you yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to be a yielded vessel for you to use. Does it mean perfect? No, because we do the battle with flesh every single day. Paul even said you know, in Romans chapter number 7, he said, boy, the things I should be doing, I find I'm not doing them. The things I, uh, I'm, I shouldn't be doing, I find I'm doing them. And I realize it, it's this, sin in me. That's what he uh, boils it down to. Every single day we wake up, we have to do battle with sin. Amen? And we can't let up. We can't just say, well, today's a vacation day, so I'm not going uh, to be a vigilant about sin. No, that's, that's the best day to be vigilant about sin. Because that's when Satan will come in and he'll sneak in and he's, he's a dirty, rotten scoundrel. Amen? He's a dirty, rotten liar. The Bible tells us he's a father of lies. Amen? And he'll come along and he'll tell you, Oh, you could just give yourself a break this one day. You don't need to read the Bible today. You don't know, need to be in church today. You don't need to uh, witness to anybody today. You just take a break today. You deserve it. You're good enough for it. You deserve it. Amen? But you see, you and I need to realize we can have liberty in Christ. And it gives you freedom. But that freedom only comes from the word of God, from the truth of God, and from the son of God. Oh, he can make you free today if you let him. How about it? Do you have liberty in Christ today? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I'm going to ask just a couple of quick questions, and then we'll have a hymn of invitation. I want to encourage you to come and do business with the Lord. Perhaps you're here today, I know the message this morning was about salvation. Tonight's message really wasn't about salvation. I mentioned about it. But maybe you're here tonight and say, Pastor Hallett, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home. Pastor, in this brief, brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure if I'm saved. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? The other question is this then. You say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. But Pastor, would you pray for me? There's some things I've been struggling with. I, I haven't had the freedom like I, I thought I should have. And I realize I've been trying to do things my own way. And I realize I need, uh, that freedom only comes by being in Christ, being in his word, being within the boundaries that God's word has set. God has spoken to my heart about that today. Pastor, in this free prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you, and thank you. Thank you, and we slip them down. Anybody else? Boy, I see some hands all over the place. Thank you, and we slip them down. Anybody else, Pastor? Pray for me. God spoke to my heart. I didn't raise my hand a moment ago, but God did speak to my heart. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody else like that here today? Pastor, pray for me. God spoke in my heart. Would you pray for me? Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. We slip them down. In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come. You can use these steps as an old-fashioned altar. Won't you just come? Say, Lord, I want to have freedom. I want to have liberty in you. Lord, help me not to use that liberty as an occasion of the flesh, the Bible says. Lord, help me to follow you and obey you. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless now the invitation time. Lord, I pray you be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone stand to their feet. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Nobody looking around.